everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. This is the first event from our Sterile Filling 101 webinar series. And today we will be discussing getting your drug product to the patient. Everything you need to know about labeling, kitting, storage, and distribution. The takeaways from this presentation will include how drug product is labeled, kitted, stored, and distributed, regulatory considerations when conducting a clinical trial, and decisions you need to make in labeling, QP, and importation. Today, we have Chief Technical Officer Dr. Andrea Wagner from Berkshire Sterile and Head of Sourcing Services and Special Accounts, Rachel Curran from Sharp Packaging Services to speak. My name is Sarah and I will be your host for today. Very quickly, we welcome your questions at any point during this presentation. To ask a question, click the arrow in your toolbar to open the questions box, write in your question and click send. Now that's out of the way, let's get started. Um, so I first want to invite Dr. Andrea Wagner at Berkshire Sterile to speak. Andrea, can you describe why we are discussing this topic today? Hi, Sarah. Packaging and distribution is the last step before the drug product reaches the patient. While it may be very tempting to directly uh, ship the product from the fill finish site to the clinic, there are plenty of barriers that make that either not possible or highly discouraged at best. Since we are that fill finish site, we at BSM, we want to help guide those that are currently manufacturing the product or looking to do so uh, at what steps they will need to take to successfully get their drug product to their patients. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, can you tell us when the pharma or biotech company that is manufacturing a drug product should begin looking for contract packaging services? It depends. If the client is in preclinical trials, they can skip the contract packaging service if they wish, and that pro product can be directly shipped to their laboratory, and we've done that here at BSM. Once they begin, begin clinical trials, however, they will need to have a contract packaging service to label, package, distribute, and collect back their drug product from the clinical sites. We have worked with clients that have made this transition. At BSM, we are partnered with Sharp Packaging Services. So while we are the experts in fill finish, they are the experts in all things packaging and labeling and distribution. Their team has performed an audit of BSM with their QP, and we have qualified them as well. And the advantage uh, for clients using both BSM and Sharp is that the drug product can be shipped under quarantine while we're releasing the product and they can begin the packaging activities so that when the quality department at BSM um, releases the product, Sharp can begin immediately releasing the product into clinic. Thank you, Andrea, uh, for that great introduction into today's topic. I will now invite Rachel Curran from Sharp to speak. Rachel, can you discuss the process and challenges of labeling, packaging, and distributing drug product after it leaves the fill finish site? And of course, how can a pharma company determine which contract packaging and distribution provider is best for them? Hi, Sarah. I'd be happy to. In my presentation, I will discuss the considerations of the sponsors to find the right service providers and partners for their studies. I will mention criteria for deciding who is a good fit for a sponsor's organisation, and I will describe what a sponsor can do to assist with a smooth experience. First, I want to mention when a company begins looking for a contract packaging and distribution provider, they will have a lot of questions. Typically, we at Sharp and BSM are asked, when were you last inspected by a regulatory agency? Were there any findings? What experience do you have? And what experience do your team members have? How flexible are you? Can you meet our timeline demands? What solutions can you offer us? What technology and capacity do you have to support us? Can we observe the manufacturing or packaging processes? What communication plans do you put together? Audit questions. And recently, what is your Brexit solution? These are all great qualifying questions that you should ask each provider to determine who can meet your needs. Now, the provider will also have questions for the sponsors and you should come prepared with answers 
if you would like an accurate quote and scope of your project. These questions include, do you have a safety data sheet for your product? Where is your product being manufactured so that we can look at the best packaging strategy? Is the study open, randomized, blinded? When are you looking to have your first patient recruited? How many patients are in the study? What patient groups are you targeting? This can impact the pack packaging strategy. How many campaigns do you plan? Do you have a protocol you can share with us? Which countries or regions are the patients to be recruited from? This aids the best packaging strategy. Who is supplying the randomization? Are you looking at an IRT system? Who is supplying the comparative drug and any ancillary items? What kind of manufacturing, primary or secondary packaging do you require? Do you have a labelling strategy? And what temperature requirements do the products have? Another key task that follows drug project management is managing critical tasks during your clinical trials, including your patient interactions and drug supplies during your clinical trials. The best solution is to rely on an interactive response technology or IRT to manage this work. Here are some important considerations when choosing and managing your IRT platform. Early engagement is key. You will want to engage with a well-rounded and experienced provider. Even further, one who houses many of the key aspects such as distribution of an IRT all under one roof. This will allow the IRT provider to begin designing and building the user requirements specification as soon as possible, which is vital to a solid system. This leads into our next consideration, which is having an organisation who can extract information from the protocol in order to begin development. This helps to alleviate glitches and rework later in the process. You should also utilise a flexible partner to meet your timeline expectations. This is very important. And of course, being open and transparent about any budgetary expectations will help early in the process to ensure the project is done within scope. The Inventory Management System or IMS is also requires the same ideas as implementing an IRT, but we also want to include a few additional points. Since this system will be mainly focusing on and interacting with logistics teams, we want to ensure the level of visibility needed in that department. Another key point is knowing who will be managing the kit list generation. Will it be the sponsor, logistics provider, or will the IMS provider assist in generating the list? The IMS provider should be able to work with any and all options. The complexity of clinical trials continue to increase, plus we have all had the added challenges posed on us by the COVID-19 pandemic. It is vital that sponsors form strategic relationships to assure a reliable supply of all needed clinical trial materials including the sourcing of comparator drugs, co-medications and ancillary items. An estimated two thirds of clinical trials involve the use of comparators and co-therapies. One of the challenges for sponsors can be the comparator sourcing, which can delay the study and increase costs. Having discussions with companies like Sharp as early as possible enables the best sourcing strategy to be established. These discussions will reduce risks and can avoid delays, which can increase costs. Comparator sourcing strategies need to include sourcing the co-medications and auxiliary supplies as well, and these can be just as problematic. Some current challenges that we are seeing with sourcing comparator drugs, co-medications and auxiliaries are concerning the documentation. Some sponsors need documentation like certificate of analysis. Unfortunately, some products can only be accompanied with documentation if study details are disclosed. And some sponsors do not want to disclose this information. This can then limit where the purchase of the product can be made. 
Primarily, we look to the marketplace to purchase and obtain documentation without supplying steady information. If a company like Sharp is dealing directly with the manufacturer, then steady details will typically need to be declared. The manufacturer will then provide a full set of documentation. We're also seeing regulatory challenges. Restricting your clinical trial application to a particular brand can increase risks and costs. If that brand is no longer available, an amendment to the clinical trial application needs to be submitted. This can result in delays, increased costs and patients potentially not receiving supplies on time. If the clinical trial application is completed in a manner which does not define a brand, and this is also mimicked in the protocol by naming the drug rather than the brand, then this gives more flexibility to purchasing the product. Obtaining a long enough expiry date for the duration of the study can also be challenging. Having a long expiry date will assist with fewer packaging campaigns and lower costs. Lead times can be challenging. Some sponsors leave the procurement of their comparator drugs, co-medications and auxiliary items to the last minute. In order to provide the best solution, it helps to engage vendors such as Sharp as soon as possible. One answer we can provide is to offer a hybrid solution where you can purchase from the market to supply a short lead time and meet the immediate need while also sourcing from the manufacturer for the long-term needs and to obtain the benefits that sourcing can provide. All these challenges can be reduced by providing tailored solutions for each study, and that's achieved by putting the correct strategy in place. To determine the correct strategy, we first need to understand the client's parameters based on the study. So you should be able to answer these questions. What type of product and strengths are required? Are generic or biosimilar products acceptable? Or is a branded product mandatory? What are the quantities and timings for each campaign? What batch specifications is the sponsor looking for? Do you need a single batch or will you accept multiple batches? What are the expiry expectations? What documentation is mandatory and what documents are nice to have? Are there any budgetary limitations? Which region is the study being run in? How and where are the supplies being packed? This information can help us look at the best region to purchase from. Supplies can come in different packaging and the big question is always, can study details be disclosed? Answers to these questions enable companies like Sharp to analyse the options for sourcing. Sharp will then consider if we can purchase directly from the manufacturer, if we need to look at the open market, or if a hybrid solution is the best strategy. There are pros and cons for these different strategies. Purchasing directly from the manufacturer is advantageous because this is the shortest supply chain available. You receive full documentation, large back sizes, and longest expiry dates possible. A secure supply for the study, pricing, and central sourcing for the study, which then works well with central packaging. The cons can be that the client would need to disclose study details. The client can encounter longer lead times due to putting agreements in place, which can involve legal departments and the product being manufactured for the study. The pros for purchasing from the open market can be that no study details need to be disclosed. Lead times are short, potential cost savings. They can be sourced centrally or at country level so that supplies are in the local languages and can be packaged at different facilities. The cons can be that this route is a more complex supply chain. Documentation is not always available. Possible multiple batches may be needed to achieve the quantities required and expiry dates are potentially shorter. Your provider should be able to help you determine what is the best course of action for your clinical study programme. Now, let's talk about packaging. Investigational products and study drug should be packaged to prevent contamination, unacceptable deterioration during transport and storage, 
and to protect the blinding if applicable. For blinding vials, companies like Sharp can offer shrouding of the vials as part of the kit. Clients need to consider what sort of kit they require patients to have. A patient kit can contain, for example, different visit cartons, and each visit carton can have auxiliary items contained in them as well as drug. Consideration needs to be taken with regards to the size of the patient kit. Do hospital sites or patients' home have enough storage space, especially if the kits need to be stored at cold or frozen temperatures? Clients need to consider the design of the study. How can the design of the kits aid usage? If a kit is very complex, cartons can be colour coded, have pre-printed text on all sides of the cartons, which can be in more than one language, have visit labels on the lids of the cartons to make it easier for dispensing or for the patients. Kits can contain the auxiliary items so that the administrator nurse has everything they require in one kit for ease of use. We've even worked with clients who have provided bags for patients to be able to carry the kits home to make it easier for them. The size of the kit can also impact the cost for the distribution and freight charges, especially if the kits need to be shipped at special temperatures. The packaging you decide on will not only affect in the hospital, but we'll also need to consider how the packaging you choose will affect packaging, distribution and storage services too. Are there particular storage and transportation conditions required? It is important to understand these conditions so any cartons, for example, are manufactured using the correct material which allows them to be stored and transported at cold and frozen temperatures. If the drug product has to be stored at a particular temperature, are any temperature excursions allowed for packaging? If so, what is that temperature and what is the duration of the time the product can be at this different temperature? The packaging company should be able to pack and label at temperatures 2 to 8, minus 20 and also on dry ice and document any times that the packaging activities occur at agreed temperature excursions in the batch documentation. Another topic we should discuss is labelling. Labelling should comply with the applicable regulatory requirements and labelling should be in a manner that protects the blinding if applicable. Information about regulatory requirements can be found in Annex 13 and the new EU Clinical Trial Regulation 536-2014. We differentiate between fixed text, regulatory requirements, and on the other side, variable information, such as patient ID, retest date, and batch numbers. Depending on the kind of label, the variable information might be printed in a separate step. Besides the protection, blinding, and providing information required from a regulatory perspective, the right labeling strategy can have a direct impact on your supply chain strategy and how you can use available supplies in the most efficient way. Is a single panel label with country specific information the best approach? Or can you leverage a booklet label where multi-languages and country specific requirements are included? A single panel label is usually language and country specific. This is a faster way to produce and easier to apply. It will also allow you to start studies in a country where the study has been approved without the need to wait for other countries providing their approval. Multi-page or booklet labels are, in the most cases, outsourced to a separate and specialised printing company. There are booklet labels that have more than 100 pages, but in clinical trials, 16, 24 or 40 pages are more common. The inner pages of the booklet label contain country or language specific information and instructions, while the first, the directly visible page, contains the variable information needed to identify the drug. The ISPE has established a good practice guide for booklet labels in clinical trials and can be used to optimise the design of the label. Compared to single panel labels, the booklet labels allows you to use your available inventory 
in a more efficient way. You can pack and label all of your supplies in one campaign. Due to the multiple countries covered in the booklet label, the material can be distributed to sites where patients are needed without the need for relabeling operations. When we think about the right label, there are other parts that need to be considered. Are there any storage and transportation conditions required? It's important to understand that those conditions may have an impact on the label. The label needs to remain applied to the primary or secondary packaging material. The label, if not of the correct specification, can fall off or the ink could become invisible. Knowing the storage conditions and selecting the correct material is essential and your label provider can help with this. What kind of material will the label be applied to? Because glues can migrate. And besides the physical elements and the actual production of the label, which depends on the complexity of the label and the required quantity, the actual information included on the label is critical and the processes including the label design, translation, back translation and regulatory checks and approval are often taken much longer than expected. It is therefore recommended to start thinking and implementing your labelling strategy at an early stage. The qualified person, QP, shall ensure that each batch of investigational medicinal products manufactured in or imported into the EU and UK complies with the applicable regulatory requirements and shall certify that those requirements are fulfilled. In order to fulfil those requirements, <clears throat> the QP will request information about the supply chain. This might include the review of documentations, audit reports, and often conducting an audit of companies involved in the supply chain. You must remember that conducting an audit may take time. If all involved parties are available, and this is not often the case, it is common to consider 90 days for this process. Moving to virtual audits during the pandemic has had a positive impact, and we have seen audits have been conducted and completed within a much shorter timescale. In some cases, this has been carried out in just two to three weeks. When importing IMP into the EU and UK or executing GMP activities, an EU or UK based facility holding an MIA, known as the Manufacturing and Import Authorization, is required. The QP is listing, listed on the MIA licence. Please be aware that not all QPs can release all materials. They need to have a certain level of experience in order to release a specific material. Although the guidelines across the EU and UK are harmonised for the moment, there are differences between the varying countries in the EU and UK and how a QP is and can operate. QPs and their availability are a rare resource. With the UK leaving the EU, the demand for QPs in both regions has further increased. For supplies which have been EU QP released, the MHRA in the UK now requires a GB QP oversight into the UK. Companies like Sharp can provide two options. We can do a virtual QP oversight where the supplies are dispatched directly from the EU to UK sites. Or the second option, is where the supplies can be sent to a depot in the UK where they can do the QP oversight and then store and dispatch this, the supplies to the sites. A simple cost comparison might help you decide on the best strategy for the oversight services. So we have discussed packaging, labelling and QP release. Let's discuss storage and distribution. Storage and distribution are complex elements of the clinical supply chain. The complexity has increased over the last 10 years as we continue to see the increased demand in cold chain requirements driven by the larger number of clinical trials with biologics and large molecule products. 
So what do we need to consider when setting up your storage and distribution elements of your supply chain strategy? The first step is to know about the countries participating in your clinical trial. The countries will determine how many and where you need a depot. Using fewer depots will in general reduce the number of drug materials required as each depot needs to be stocked with an additional overage. There are regulatory requirements making it mandatory to set up a depot in certain countries or regions, for example, the EU. A depot also allows you to keep drug supply on local stock and to react fast on supply requests, especially in countries where the import can take longer, countries like Argentina and China. A depot is a valuable solution to mitigate risks and to assure patients can, can continue to receive their medication. Of course, the depot needs to provide the capabilities and capacity to support your trial. You also might need to think about auditing your depot network. Asking your quality teams, do you need or want to audit all depots as this is takes time or just specific ones, as examples of the depot network may all have the same processes. Auditing all depots will be more cost intensive. Or has your packaging contractor already have a depot network approved, like Sharp? Besides the already mentioned considerations, you may find yourself in a situation where you ask yourself if you need a local depot, or if you can supply from a central or regional depot. Besides assuring that patients will receive their supplies and can be kept engaged in the clinical trial, a simple cost comparison might help you make a decision. When comparing your options, you should consider storage costs, drug costs, and distribution of the number of shipments from the central depot to the setup of a local depot, including additional drug supplies required, storage and distribution of any local distribution. Knowing the countries your trial will be conducted in will also allow you to identify import requirements and to obtain information about how long it will take to obtain import licenses. Clarify who will and can be responsible for the import, who will be the importer of records, and how long it will take to transport the material from a packaging facility or depot to a local depot or clinical site. Taking the transport and import time into consider consideration will lead you to the next point, identifying the correct packaging and transport solutions and transport mode. When discussing biologics, we usually talk about refrigerated shipments of two to eight. Over the last couple of years, we have seen a lot of positive developments, reusable as well as single use packaging solutions using change, phase change material and vacuum insulate panels are all sophisticated solutions allowing us to maintain a specified temperature for 60 or even 96 hours. A broad range of packaging solutions is available and your CMO and courier partner can guide you to identify the correct solution. This also applies to the temperature loggers used. While we have seen a development towards USB loggers, the latest development is using real-time tracking, tracing and monitoring technologies, leveraging GPS technology to identify the location of your shipment, accessing data from different sensors, such as temperature, light, position and pressure, and even to use technology to send automated messages. Imagine getting a text from your drug product saying, hello, here is your drug supply from Sharp to your clinical site. I have left the custom office at the airport and will arrive in two hours at your site. Wouldn't that be nice? Depots are also responsible to collect returns from clinical sites and to arrange the destruction of unused and or wasted study material and to provide related destruction certificates. Your CMO partner usually has a qualified and global GMP depot network and can help you with developing an efficient storage and distribution strategy. Involving companies like Sharp and Berkshire as early as possible helps to simplify the, 
the supply chain complexity as discussed. There can be a lot of different aspects to take into consideration from the purchase of any comparator and auxiliary items to understanding which depots and distribution is the best for your study and your patients. So my main recommendations to anyone that is looking for packaging and distribution services is this. First, understanding each other's expectations. Communication is key, often and early in the planning stage. This leads to my next recommendation, which is to get companies like Sharp and Berkshire involved as early as possible to help with the study plan and design. And finally, partner with companies that have experience. We here at Sharp and Berkshire have a huge amount of experience and we are a resource which is available to you. Please use us. Even if your project is out of scope, we can direct you to another group that can help. Sarah, thank you for this time. I hope that everyone here was able to take a lot out of today's presentation. Thank you, Rachel. That concludes the end of today's presentation. In just a moment, we will transition to the Q&A portion of this webinar. Again, to ask a question, click the arrow in your toolbar to open the questions box, write in your question and click send. Also in that menu, you will be able to access the handouts from today, which includes the presentation slides. I'm going to give everyone a moment to ask their questions. Today's webinar is just the first webinar of this series, Sterile Filling 101. We have 10 total episodes in this series, which I have listed here. In April, we will be airing our next webinar regarding engineering runs. This event will discuss what engineering's are in fill finish and whether they are necessary for your project. Following the end of this event, I will be sending you an email with a sign up link to each of these events. But you can also sign up by going to BerkshireSteroManufacturing.com slash Sterile Filling 101. And the events will be listed there for you to register to. Okay, it looks like we have received some questions. So let's start with the first one. Uh, these are all directed to Rachel, no surprise there. Uh, Rachel, someone had asked, what is the most cost-effective region to purchase from? This is a good question. Primarily, the US is the most expensive region to purchase products from, <laughs> no surprise. But it will depend on understanding the requirements for the study and then working with a client to put a strategy together. We would not want to purchase a drug with a lower cost from a particular region and then have elevated packaging, distribution and freight charges. We would not want to put any product under additional risk by moving the product around the world unnecessarily. We would look at all the information and then provide options for the sponsor to make the final decision on the way forward. You know, a good example of price differences for in different regions uh, is Keytruda. It's an expensive drug and is approximately one and a half thousand dollars more expensive per vial in the US than the EU. So it's a big difference. Thank you, Rachel. I have another question here for you. The question is, can dummy or sample kits be provided to assist with training of the sites? Yep, yeah, this is no problem at all. This is a service Sharp provides for many clients and can be very helpful. Thanks again, Rachel. We have just one more. The question is, how long does a virtual QP oversight take? The sponsor needs to provide documentation up front. Some of the documents that are required by the QP are the technical agreement, manufacturing and distribution supply chain, UKCT application form, UK MHRA approval, manufacturing license and GMP certificates and ethical approvals. I can provide a full list of the documentation by email if anyone requires this. Once this has been set up for Sharp, the verification can be provided within hours of information received, but no later than one working day. Thank you, Rachel. I want to give a huge thank you to everyone that joined today's webinar and a thank you to our speakers, Rachel Curran and Dr. Andrew Wagner. Thank you so much for putting all of your time and effort in today's event. And to our viewers that are here, keep your eye out for my email and don't forget to sign up for our other events, which you can do by going to BerkshireSteroManufacturing.com slash Sterile Filling 101. I hope you took a lot away from this presentation. 
and I hope to see you again in our future webinars.